This video is going to show you how to multiply with decimals. Um, so we're going to take a problem, something like 127 multiplied by 4. So that would be uh, without decimals. And we're also going to have a problem, 12 and 7 tenths multiplied by 4. Now, my goal today is to show you how they're very related, whereas if you can do this one, then you can easily do that one. So let's, let's just take a look at this one. We have 4 times 100. And that's going to equal 400. We have 20 times 4, which is going to equal 80. And the last one is we have 4 times 7, which is going to give us 28. Simply add it up. We have an 8 here, 0, carry the 1, and we get a 5 for 508. All right, so that's that's without a decimal. Here's here's how to do it with a decimal. Let's just pretend that's not there for right now. Four times one hundred. Four times one hundred would give us four hundred. Next one we have four times twenty, which is eighty. Last one is four times. 7, which equals 28. We're going to add this up. Notice that these are the exact same numbers. However, we're just pretending that decimal is not there right now. Let's add this up. We get 8, 10. With the carrying of the 1, we get 5. And we have 508. Now, we need to go back and use that decimal, put it back in. Now, what I like to do in this instance is I like to round. So let's pretend that 12 and 7 tenths was 12. And 4, we'll just leave it 4. Now I know just from my math facts that 12 times 4 is 48. So what I want to do is I want to get this answer as close to 48 as I possibly can while inserting a decimal. If I put it here, it's 5 and 8 hundredths. That's not close to 48. If I put it here, that's 50 and 8 tenths, which is very close to 48. Therefore, the answer, 12 and 7 tenths multiplied by 4 equals 50 and 8 tenths. Try another problem very similar like that, very, very similar to that. We'll do this one uh, without the example of the whole numbers. We'll just have decimals here. Let's take 21 and 6 tenths. I'm going to multiply that by 3. Okay, so um, again, we'll just pretend that's not there for right now. We'll have 3 times 200, which is 600. We have 3 times 10, which is 30. Get these written down for your help. And then lastly, we have 6 times 3, which is 18. We can add those up. We're going to get 8, 4, and 6 for 648. Now we need to put the decimal back in. And I know that 21 and 6 tenths, well, let's say it's close to 20. And we can leave our 3 where it is. So this is our rounding. This is if, when we round. So we get 20 times 3, which is 60. How do I get the decimal back in here to make it close? Well, again, that's 6 and 48 hundredths, which isn't very close. Here's 64 and 8 tenths, which is very close to 60. So what we can say is 21 and 6 tenths times 3 equals 64 and 8 tenths. Let me leave you with a couple problems to solve. For example, let's just have 41 and 2 tenths. We're going to multiply that by, let's say, 5. And the other one we'll do um, 31 and 7 tenths multiplied by 4 couple more that we're going to take a look at. I'd like you to do this one with me now. So first we have 5 times 400. So we get 2,000. Next we have 5 times 10, which is 50. Last we have 2 times 5, correct. 5 times 2. 5 times 2 is going to be tenths, right? Your 10 right there. And we'll just add these up. We get 
2.0260. Now let's put our decimal point back in. We figure that 41 and 2 tenths is close to 40. And 5, we can leave that 5. Now you might say, why 40? Why not 41? Well, 40 is just a really easy number that I can multiply. I know that 40 times 5 is 200. I just, that, I mean, I can figure that out really quickly, whereas if I do 41, then it's another step. And the idea is just to get this close. We're just rounding. So, needing to put the decimal point back in, where does it go? Well, here, it's only 2 and 6 hundredths. Here, it's 20 and 6 tenths. Here, it's going to be 206. And that's going to be the one that we're looking for. So, 41 and 2 tenths multiplied by 5 is going to give you 206. It's funny that it comes out without a decimal, or it could just be 206 and 0 tenths, or just 206. The last one I'm going to change is just a little bit. We're going to do 31 and 7 tenths. Um, instead of 31 and 7 tenths, let's do 1 and 7 tenths times 14. So let's take a look here. Again, we're going to use partial products. I'll move this out of the way. I'll slide this over to work with it one more time. So, again, we'll just pretend that that decimal is not there for the time being. We have 10 times 10, which is 100. For our next one, we have... Uh, we'll go 10 times 7, which is 70. Now we'll do 10 times 4, which is 40. And lastly, we'll do 7 times 4, which is going to give us 28. Add those up. 8, 7 plus 4 is 11, plus 2 is 13, so we'll carry our 1, and we get 2, 3, and 8. Our decimal was taken out. Let's put it back in. I know 1 and 7 tenths is close to 2. 14, we can leave it 14, because I know 2 times 14 is going to give me 28. Having to put the decimal point back in, does it go here? Or does it go here? Does it go here? Where does it go exactly? Where can you put that decimal to make it 28? It's not going to be here, because that would be much too small. It's not going to be here. It's going to be much too large. If I take out the decimal point right here, our answer 23 and 8 tenths is going to be pretty close to 28. So that will help you figure out how to multiply um, using some estimation. And um, there you go. There you have it. That's multiplying with decimals.